What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Billy Collins and this is Matt Dodge and this is The Collins Project. Guys, on this episode, it's okay to be selfish. We are. I want to talk about me. Want to talk about I. That's it. Here we go. Yep, that's me, Billy Collins, and this is my channel. A channel filled with interviews, motivation, entertainment, and perhaps a cocktail or two. Guys, this is The Collins Project. Matt Dodge. Guilty. Guilty as charged. What's on your mind? I think I want to talk about being selfish. Mm. And why it's okay to be selfish. And why I am sick and damn tired. Of being a doormat. Of being a doormat. Yeah. Actually sick of selfish being a, a dirty word. Yeah. When you, myself, and all you know that... We're all selfish. We're all selfish. Yeah. We're all, we all have to be. Uh, I read early on, we're all walking around with a sign that says, what's in it for me? Yeah. Around our neck. Uh, and that's, that's true. I would ask, all right, if you look at your life, when did you achieve the most? And was it when you were being selfish, focusing on yourself? It was. Bettering yourself? And what, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, if you actually track your results to what has actually worked, it's when you were being selfish. Yeah. Self-development books, self-help, you know, you're reading these to, to improve yourself. Um, because if you're not worth much, you're not going to be worth much to others. And, and that, that is the point right there is I have spent, it seems like a, a lifetime, putting everyone in front of me, whether it be my wife, my children, my parents, my friends, whoever comes to my life, people that I don't, I don't even know, mm. put their needs in front of mine. And it sometimes will take you to a dark place because you're, you almost seem like you know, well, need some val either validation from them. I think a lot of it is validation. Or it could be you're not... Uh your biggest fan, yeah, you know what I mean. True. If you've got, to, if you don't think much and, of yourself, and that's, of course you're going to treat everybody else like royalty. And that's I, I, I didn't think of myself in that high regard, especially in certain times of my life. Mm. Losing a business, getting divorced, kids moving away, uh, people dying. You know, you just, you just lose some. The the more you're weather tested, mm. you can either be beat down. Or you can use it to your advantage. It's sometimes a combination of both. Yeah. And I think for me, it was a combination of both because I got beat down. Yeah, I knew what I had to do because I've been there before. Mm -hmm. I taste the failure and I learned from what the failure taught me. It's the greatest teacher on earth is failure. Yeah. And what it taught me is that I need to learn to be more selfish. I need to learn to be more me first. And then everyone, what, what's the, what, what is it you just said that you always talk about the airplane? Yeah, I mean, prime example, um, there's a sudden drop in, in what, pressure in the yeah. cabin or whatever, and the oxygen masks fall down. They don't say, okay, Billy, I want you to help every single person around you last second when you're about to die, put yours on. No, put your, put your own on, because if you're not breathing, can't help your kid, can't help your wife, can't help the elderly couple next to you. You can't help anybody. Yeah, and that's if you're dead. And that's the way that that's basically in life too. I mean, if 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 you're so hell bent on giving everybody everything and you're not thinking about yourself and your your health goes down, your mental uh, awareness goes down, you just get beat down in general. Then there's no way in hell I can help anyone. Yeah. Yeah, do do gooders rarely do good. Yeah, it's like what is it? the the path to the road to hell is paved with good intentions, you know. Um, so yeah, and I think it's you kind of develop this as you age too. It, you start to build some intrinsic value in yourself. Like, hey, I'm valuable, right? If if I get fired here, I know I can get a job anywhere else. That's going to build confidence in yourself. Yeah. And you only get that by learning the stuff you need to learn, um, understanding what you're naturally good at. What are your 
what's your superpower, you know? Um, we're, we're kind of, if we're honest, we're taught in school to be, try to be well-rounded. Name me anyone that's really successful that's really well-rounded. They're not, you know? <laughs> they, they understand what their natural, um, how they're wired, and then they focus on that. Yeah. You know, the, what subject did you suck at in school? God, man, I was so great at everything. It was kind of hard to... You were the ideal probably factory I, worker that uh, popped out. I just, if I, I guess social studies. Yeah, whatever it is. Some people math, yeah. some people language or, what, or whatever. As soon as you're out of school... Spanish. I was terrible at Spanish. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I just I, I abandoned it. I, I just um, had no need for it. But it's not as if... When you get into the quote unquote real world, you're going to have to plug yourself in to where you're the most valuable, right? You are, that's why I love team sports, for example. I was a punter, so I was a pretty small uh, part of a football team, but it was, that was my thing. That was where I was more valuable than anyone right. else at. That's where you excelled. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of knowing your role. What are you better at naturally? And then, you know, uh, I read a lot of Marcus Buckingham. He talks about um, strength. So there's there's three components of strength. There's your God-given talent, which is the most important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's things. No one could teach Shaquille O'Neal how to be seven foot and be athletic. So he had to have that component. Then you have um, knowledge and skills, right? Um, but it starts with that talent. And if you're in a role where you're, you don't, you're not utilizing that or, you know, you're because you can be good at stuff that you just can't stand. You know, that's almost, that's almost the worst. That's kind of how I felt with football. Um, I was really good at punting a football, but I just, it wasn't that, I didn't enjoy it, you know? So I'm like promoted to the highest level <laughs> in the world, one of 32 in the world at a position, compensated very well for it. Um, but I, I, didn't, I didn't feel any intrinsic value out of that, right? It felt great having people tell you you're awesome, you know, but if that, once that goes away, which it does for all of us, right? It goes away. Eventually you're not the, the biggest, strongest, or you're not on the team anymore. Well, if my validation was, if my self-worth was based on fans or people telling me I'm awesome, well, as soon as I'm off the team, suddenly there's, the fans aren't there anymore. It's gone. You know, and it's like, now what do I have to offer? And we spoke of this before, Filming is, is that the black hole that is missing in your inner self. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's gone now. It's been ripped away. I just need someone to tell me I'm awesome. Like someone, yeah. someone tell, someone like you, you did everything for everybody. And it's like, I just wish they would appreciate me for that. Right. I wish they would value me for that. Cause I see this as valuable. But more times than not, uh, we were saying off air, um, you know, if I knew I could call you at any time, you would drop whatever you had and you would come do anything. Hey, Billy, I, I need a hundred bucks, man. Can you get it? And then you do it. No questions asked. Um, it's, you might feel like you're adding, you're adding value to my life, um, but I can promise you how I'm going to view you. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to respect you, right? I'm gonna think this guy's weak. I can milk him for everything he's worth. Like he's he's a doormat, you know. I can, and that's so what, that, that's what where nice guys end up getting beaten down. So is that so? What you're saying is you should never give to people because that's kind of like the you shouldn't. Sh it's not that you should never give, um, but it's it's real life. A lot of people who who give, they're giving at the expense of themselves, right? They're putting the oxygen, Put mask, out. On. Yeah, they're putting yeah, the oxygen yeah. mask on before themselves. Reality is, you know, even though football wasn't my favorite thing in the world, I practiced like crazy. I was out in the field and that was very selfish, right? For me to get better. But by doing that promoted me to one out of 32 in the world and it brought, now if I want to give, being in NFL, you have more money than you'll ever have. I have the capacity to give now. Yeah. So it's really taking care of yourself first because then you have the actual ability to take care of others, right? Um, and that's just, and that's that's the reality. If we're honest with our lives, where we've had the most impact, where people have said, "Man, that's you've added the most value there," it doesn't it doesn't happen on accident. Like if you're a great public speaker.
speaker. You didn't just, I guess I'll do, no, you, you worked at it, drilled it, whatever. Now you're able to impact others. Right. You, you get what I'm saying? So you put the effort in, what is a machine? You put a hundred percent in, hopefully you get 80% of productive out. Mm. So to be able to get a hundred, you got to put 120%. Yeah. And, I and mean, really, really drive home the practice, the, the self worth part of your, of your life. Make sure that you are 120% so you can give 100%. We just turned into a locker room. We did, didn't we, guys? Man, I appreciate the opportunity out there. Is Ray Lewis coming through that door? Ray Lewis, man, I hope not. I'm, I'm gonna divert. <laughs> hey, you can't hit the punter. <laughs> can't hit him. But yeah, I mean, and when we talk about self-worth or whatever, if you're not actually worth anything, that's a good, like you need to Focus on yourself and become valuable. Yeah. Right? I, I didn't have a spot on that team just because I was a nice guy. Like, without me being able to punt the ball, I was, I'd be gone, which I ended up getting fired, right? It's, that's very much how the quote unquote real world is. You know, if you're not valuable. And I, th I think if, if you guys are watching these videos or if you're watching these videos right now, the, the purpose and why we're saying all this stuff and doing all this stuff is because we either want you to be a high-valued man or a high-valued woman. Be, and and that's just better for everyone. Yeah. Not not just for yourself. Yeah. But being high value is is partially you have to be selfish sometimes to for raise sure. it, like you just said. You know, take yourself shopping and, and spend the money that you're gonna the hundred dollars I was going to give you, mm. my last hundred dollars I was going to give you, I went and bought me a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Which is weird because I, I've recently got into different workout shoes and I've got three different, never had workout shoes like this before. Three different styles of workout shoes. They're all $150 a piece. Mm. Before, I would never. Yeah. I would go to shoe show or pay less shoes or whatever and get the... $40 pair of ASICs. Nothing wrong with those. Hurt my feet. So there was something wrong with them. Yeah. You I get mean, what you pay for. Yeah. But it, I, because I, I didn't want to spend in, you know, the uh, rack room or one of those places has a buy one, get one. So I would immediately call my wife and say, hey, they, if I want to get one, do you, do, you have, do you need any? Instead of buying me two pairs. Yeah. I would think about that. And it, it's and it was that was me not being selfish, but now with the shoes that I'm getting, my feet feel better. I, I look better in them. I feel better as a person. And it's it's more in our own head. Yeah, I yeah, ask, right, right. If I ask my wife that, she's like, "Get your what do you you just you need." She's exactly. always trying to encourage me because I think our natural default, how we're raised, is. You know, when the Titanic's going down, who's gonna die? The men, you all need to die. We need to save the women and children. They're the value. Men, you all, that we're, that's kind of expected, right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's tough as men when uh, masculinity is now toxic masculinity. It's like, oh, I don't wanna do that. And plus you have a lot of guys that were raised in single mother households. And I think that has a lot to do with, with it's our fault as men. Yeah. Uh, there are outside contributing factors to that. Yes, I know. But like what you said, Allison, when I would call Fran, I was like, hey, do you want a pair? She, she would always tell me, well, why don't you just... She's like, I don't care. Do what you want. Like, she'd she'd be like, she's basically begging you. <laughs> no, she would tell me, she's like, don't get me anything. If you have buy one, get one, why don't you get a, a pair of dress shoes or whatever and for work or yeah. like do it for you. I mean, she was very adamant about that. Like, you know, don't, I'm fine, you give me enough, worry about yourself. Yeah. And those are signs of being selfish. That's, that I've, I've got to learn, you know, that I'm slowly learning and letting go is to, it's okay to be selfish. Well, think if, if it, it's seeing your intrinsic value. So think if you owned a racehorse that was the top, you paid half a million dollars for this racehorse. Are you just gonna give it donuts and like, hey, let's get the buy one, get one shoot. No, you're gonna put, you're gonna pour resource into that because it's an asset. You know what I mean? You're gonna demand the best. You're gonna hire a trainer. You know, someone's gonna be brushed. I don't know what they do with horses, but you're gonna have them on the most you're gonna have the uh, top strict diet. diet yeah. They're gonna practice. You're gonna do all that stuff. And yet we treat ourselves like crap. You know, yeah. like we don't, but, you know what I mean? So it's it's kind of ass backwards, and it 
maybe it feels selfish or maybe it if because we're expected to you know protect and and you know give ourselves freely and, and all that stuff but it, it doesn't lead to anything like it really it, it's going to attract leeches to you right? yeah. it's going to attract people i mean we see it all what they call them guys that it's simp online um, they're just constantly like throwing money at, at women just to get attention it's like without them things like only fans or whatever these would never are, they wouldn't, wouldn't exist. exist yeah yeah they wouldn't exist so um you know uh, at least with them i know we talk a lot of male female dynamics females understand this right it's, but my dad always says a sucker born every day so there's just people out there um and we all now i do believe giving is good i mean the bible says um, it's better to give than to receive um but we kind of translate. It didn't say receiving is bad. He said, yeah, we receive, yeah, that's we true. We should I only did, give, that's... never receive. You know, right? Um, so whatever guilt you have for, you don't feel guilty walking around in nice shoes and not your feet not hurting, right? Um, so yeah, I, I I can't remember where I heard that metaphor with the um, the racehorse, but it's so true. You know, it's like I would never let my son walk around in shoes that I walk around in. <laughs> it's so, it's so weird but i mean if i look better pour into myself become a more valuable guy it's going to trickle down to my son yeah and it's also going to show him that like, it's okay to be yeah like this is what what you need to do and he's going to aspire to be like that if i'm just some pushover just uh, i'm defaulting to his mother and de like whatever he wants he's going to get slapped in the face in the real world and i i, I think that is true. Also, it, by him seeing that, he's going to be a higher value person. He's going to value me. Yeah. And then he's going to be more successful because he holds himself to a higher standard. He has needs that he wants to be, uh, that need to be taken care of before anything else. Right. And then by that, he's going to be successful. He's going to be acknowledged more in the world. And, and in return, he'll have the opportunity to give a give stuff away or whatever he wants to do. Yeah. But it, it, it's taken me a long time to learn this. It's, it's a hard lesson because it's everywhere in, in society. Like it's everywhere. The man is always carrying the bags for the wife, you know, in the commercials, the, the dumb husband, the dumb man. You take men out of society, the society would implode. It would? Completely. It would, it would, it would die, right? We, we were talking off air. If we got, if you're in, um, things like feminism and these things, they're first world problems. And the reason they say that is because when shit hits the fan, we revert to our, our roles really quickly. Someone comes in your house, you're in bed with your wife and you have your kids, and they're trying to rob the place. We're, there's no, going to be no marches for equality then. It's your, your expectation to get up, you're going to take action, right? But we've gotten so comfortable that there are a lot of weak men, a lot of boys that can shave, you know? Um, what the the cycles that kind of, that civilizations go through? So what? Bad times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create, create weak men. Weak men create bad times. And I think we're in that kind of fourth thing right now. And now you have things like toxic toxic masculinity and and all of the. They, but you don't see that on the female side, right? No, you're an independent woman, girl. You do you. Focus on yourself. You don't need no man. You never hear that the opposite way. It's starting to come back that way. Yeah. You know, with these different MGTOW movements or, or, or whatever. But I think people are seeing. Look, me being this selfish, um, the selfless, give everything. Be, what is it leaving leaving us with? Right. I mean, you, weak. You raise three children. It's weakness. And still, and still got divorced. Yeah. You, uh, you yeah. Say, it's a hard pill to swallow. And I, I think I, I hope people are starting to wake up and see that everyone has a role, everyone has an importance in life, male, female, I don't care your race, color, creed, whatever. Everyone has a purpose, everyone has value. It's just, do not overshadow your value by theirs. Do not put everyone on a pedestal and not put yourself I think everyone has the potential for value. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's true. You, you I think it's I mean? all if, built it's in. It's being self-aware is, is smart like if you're fat and you're looking in the mirror you're going to see a fat person right it's silly to say oh i'm beautiful you can put every message in the world that's saying you know obese is beautiful 
we have eyeballs, right? It's, it's silly. So don't be delusional at the same time. Um, be honest with yourself. Only way you can be honest with yourself is <laughs> stop, stop putting the oxygen mask on other people. Put yours on first. And then your capacity to help is so much more. Yeah. We all need to strive to be better, whether that, you know, lose weight, brush your hair, brush your teeth, whatever the case, pluck your eyebrows, whatever, try to better yourself and treat yourself as if you value yourself. Exactly. And it's, you know, that it's, racehorse. If you had a half a million dollar racehorse, are you going to just, hey, do whatever you want? You yeah. Know, and it, eat, it, eat it all this. comes with, it's for them to, you're going to have to be selfish to do that. 100%. And I just, that's what irritates me when I watch a lot of the stuff on TV. It just, I don't want to see it. I want well, to see it. Uh, so what I would say, stop watching it. Yeah, and I, I basically like don't. I, I, mean, haven't, I haven't watched mainstream media. I cannot remember since the last time. It's only, it's only improved my life. You know, um, you know I, I remember when COVID, the zombie apocalypse was first went viral <laughs> and uh i was it it, it can terrify you, you yeah know? i'm like man this is but after two seconds i kind of saw it for what it was i'm like man a lot of this crap is cosmetic theater okay i see the game here yeah you know um tony robbins talks about see things for how they are not for worse than what it actually is my um coach at east carolina would say it's never as good as it seems never as bad as it seems that's used to i've like uh, trying to be more level um, as opposed to that roller coaster. I'm, I'm really high. Like, everything's good. Everyone say, Billy, you're the man. You're the best magician ever or you're the best entrepreneur. And then it's gone and now you're yeah, you know, hiding in your, in your room. And I, I think there's a, when you talked about uh, things aren't as good as they seem and things aren't as bad as they seem, that's uh, a lot of that has to do with our social media output in life. I haven't been on social media in Yeah, I know you're, six you're not years. a big, big social media person, but I also think there's, I don't have a problem with people that want to be fake because I'm hoping that by them wanting to be fake is that's where they want to be. And that's what they're striving for. I have a problem with people wanting to be fake. I don't have a problem with faking it until you make it. Yeah, that's that's where I was getting to. Yeah. You know, I think it's fake it till you make it, and when you make it, fake some more. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, well, I want to be a millionaire. Okay, well, you become a millionaire. It's like, you know, okay, well, now I'm a billionaire. It's like, be true, set your goals, but once you get to that goal again, like I said, move the flag. Mm -hmm. Move that checkered flag to another yeah dimension absolutely and that's how we're built like we're either getting better or getting worse like there, there's no it's not stagnant if you have a hundred grand and you go buried in your backyard 10 years from now there's still a hundred grand there but it's not worth a hundred grand right because yeah. of inflation people are, are lapping us um and i, I want to say grant cardone who i listened to before I, I don't listen to him much now but um he i think he said in one of his books like why be average when the marketplace only rewards excellence which is true. The market, if you're, if you're middle of the road, that's the results you're going to get, right? If you're above average or excellent, that's where you're in that upper echelon. And, and here's a key about that, that phrase is when you are average, you have way more competition than when you're excellent. There's not a lot of excellent people. There's a ton of average people out there. So you're competing with the average. Mm. Set your goals up higher. Become excellent. What's that bumper sticker? There's always, there's always, um, the, the road's always clear on the extra mile or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's obviously it takes hard work, but it also takes self awareness. You know, so guys, take take a um, an inventory of your life. Like where are you naturally gifted? Where you don't even have to think about it, and find ways to mesh that with helping others, right? Because we can't just not help people. Capitalism is, a, is the free exchange of, hey, I've got this good, you have money. Yeah. We, you know, I don't, it's not at gunpoint, right? So you still have to add value, but you know, if I'm a surgeon you, and you need surgery, you're gonna hope that, I went, that I've practiced, that I've 
made myself the best surgeon in the history of the world because me doing that. <laughs> and you didn't stay at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna translate to the brain surgery that you're gonna get. You, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So when shit hits the fan, excellence is the only thing that matters, right? We talk about uh, uh, people that are fat, normalizing all this stuff. Um, if there was a true zombie apocalypse, they're gonna get picked off, right? It's survival of the fittest. We've been so comfortable in America, we've had it so good, um, that now we're, we're kind of looking for any way to be um, offended or, or, or whatever it is. It's like, yeah. But maybe it's because we don't have, I, I have friends that do missionary trips to Africa or whatever, and they see what poverty really looks like, and they come back and have a new sense of appreciation. Uh, because they're given perspective. Same thing with first generation immigrants that move here. They're like, this is the greatest thing in the world. Like, I can start a business, very little, uh, and they, you know, we've all heard those stories. They, they, you know, that you hit on that, like Gary Vee talks about, you know, from Russia and coming over and his dad working in the liquor store, and then eventually buying the liquor store, and then he comes in and, and takes it from a $3 million to a, what, $60 million. It's because their work ethic is, is I, I don't want to say it's better than ours, but I think it the opportunity, it, it is, 100%. yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. But me, me included, like, we've right. had it good. You know, I, I talk to a lot of former pro athletes, right? And a lot of pro athletes come from nothing. You know what I mean? They were raised by their grandparents in a, in a community. The only way to get out is either in jail or through sports, you know, <laughs> they don't have any options. And then they make it, they strike it rich, and they're now fabulously wealthy for the rest of their life. And I love asking them, hey, you've got four kids. How are you going to help them create the grit that you created when you were in the slums so that they go on and accomplish great things? And it, they're like, you know, man, it's tough. Because that's like, I want to give them the life I never had. But I'm like, without that life, you wouldn't be here. Right. right? You don't, so. What's the, what's the saying, show me a son of a great man and I'll show you, I can't think of that, but it, it's basically saying the same thing. It's like, you know, you, you can take Michael Jordan, bust his ass, get where he was, best in the world, best there's ever been, but his kids aren't. His kids have never had to have that struggle like he has or... You know, never had to hustle as hard. And he's an example, too. And not saying his kids aren't great, but they're not Jordan great. Yeah, but I mean, he that's a prime example of taking inventory of what you're awesome at, just God-given natural ability, um, and working your ass off at that. Yeah. Because a little seat, when you're really, really good at something and you, have that, like you actually enjoy doing it, you're going to put in the, the time, right? Malcolm Gladwell talks about um, 10,000 hours to become... Yeah. really good at something well if you're gonna have to put 10,000 hours in it anyways might as well be something that you enjoy doing right you know because it's your only chance you're gonna get burnt out um, so I, I can't speak for Michael Jordan's kids but yeah I mean it's impossible even the uh, there was a somebody was interviewing a guy from India and he said um, I want to come to America and he's like why do you want to come to America he's just curious um, he goes because in America the poor people are fat and drive cars and I'm like, man. wow, I'm like, that's, that's <laughs> some perspective. So, yeah. You know, think of that. He's like, that is the land of milk and honey. You know, if I could just get there. Um, and this might be a, a discussion for another video, but it's t about finding your why. Yeah. Um, and remember we were speaking with that gentleman in the insurance industry, he owned his company and he yeah. was talking about Philip Hedges, yeah. like your why which um, Simon Sinek wrote a book, Start With Why. You know, that was, it's kind of died down a little bit now, but now it used to be, everyone was talking about what is your why. What's your why? <laughs> People buy what, why you do something, not what you do. Um, and what he was talking about is, the reality is most of our whys are behind us, right? I don't want to, I want to be a better father than my dad, or I want to be a better mom than my mom. You know, I don't want to live in poverty anymore. A lot of times our why is behind us, and it's, it's, a, it's a lot more valuable. Like, it's, it's a much better motivator, right? I never, yeah, want to, I never want to go back to that. Yeah, th and that's what, that's what Philip said. He said, my why is to not to go back to where I came from. Right, because he has perspective, right? Yeah. But sometimes... In, in, Which is, to me, was one of the best whys I've 
I, when I heard that, I never thought of it. I thought of why I was achieving great things or whatever, um, but we've had it so good for so long that it's not, there's, there's, you can't fail, right? There's the social safety nets and all of these things. If you take away that fear of falling, of failing, of, of truly failing, like real consequences, yeah. then that's so much a much better motivator than, <laughs> yeah. you know. Because fear is a protector, but yeah, that's that's a that, we're gonna put that in the archives for a video later. Your whys, that's a good topic. Why are that's we talking topic. about this? I don't know. Why are we talking? But yeah, about this? so getting being back to the being selfish. Um, I think the key is to know how you're wired, right? Take an inventory of your own life, your talents, what you do naturally, um, and then beat that thing to death till you're the best, right? Don't don't try to be a well-rounded, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, because it, it's just not rewarded, right? right. If you're I, trying to achieve great things, it, it, going back to Gary Vee, and that's with that is he he talks about people want to work on their. He's like, if you're great at something, or you're bad at something. He said, people say, oh, work on your bad stuff and bring it up here. He goes, well, now you're just you're not excelling. You're just bringing it up to a level. Yeah, like. Work on your good stuff. Well, as a parent, when you... And that might be being selfish. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely being contrary. Yeah. Um, I mean, you had three kids, so when they brought the report card home, if they had A, A, B, and F, what are you going to focus on? You're going to look at the F. You need to get extra tutoring in the F. And, and that's kind of what I said, school is creating these well-rounded factory workers. The reality is, like, you got an A in this, you didn't study for one second, okay, that's where you, your this is where your focus needs to be. But we we kind of say, okay, don't you got that figured out? Yeah, so let's, exactly. And you'll go from being terrible at math to being really mediocre. Bad at math. Yeah, yeah. But you're never going to be great at it. And again, why not focus on greatness? That's the only thing the marketplace actually rewards. And that's, that's the reality. The greatness and the excellence that you spoke about are things that me personally that I've. I've started on that journey to get there. It's why we're doing these videos. It's why I want to start a company. It's why to get back to where I need to be, and that is excellence. And that, and there's going to be a sense of of self worth because I'm going to be selfish in, at times. I'm not going to be able to give you this because I need to, I need the attention to go to something I'm, ex, I'm excelling about. Yeah. That A in school that we talked about. I'm going to get on my find the, uh, the the thing that I'm good at other than being handsome is it's a work in progress <laughs> it's working in progress I mean it's working out yeah yeah working out the scalp but it's tough because we're so taught to be well rounded yeah you know the world's not well rounded think of a team sport I mean there are if you're like golf, you have to be good at everything. But if you look at like Tiger Woods in his prime, he was the best ball striker in the world. And he busted his ass at that. You know, he was good. He was the other stuff. You know, I like to say you want to know something about everything and know everything about something. And yeah. that, man, you can you can. That's the only way to succeed. Because your your good fortunes, the stuff that you're good at. In the long run, we'll make up for what you're not good at. Nobody will care about that. Yeah. Because you know, you're if you're like, the oh. best closer in the world, why are you filling out the paperwork? Yeah. You need to be closing. When you're closing, you're making more money for the business. You can hire someone that they're, they are attention to detail oriented. They can fill out the paperwork. It's silly to do everything. Now, starting out, we talked about starting a business or whatever. You might have to do a couple different things, but do it just as long as you have to until you can delegate. Mm -hmm. And then, man, the, the, the sky is the absolute limit. Show me any well-rounded, super successful person. They're, they don't exist. Because I, I posted a video on the stages, where the stage was in the business. And I said in the phrase, we're here. And I was like, why do I keep saying we? It's me. <laughs> I'm doing it. Because you want to appear bigger than you actually are. Right. And I was like, eventually... I will have a design. Did you create a fake email address like Jane? Hey, Jane, my assistant. You just go to <laughs> send it computer. to somebody else. 
People do that though. Uh, like, look, whatever, fake it till you make it. They, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole purpose of that. And I, you know, if I got to be selfish and, and portraying that, I'm gonna do it. I don't care. But I, I really think that's where I am right now. Is like I'm trying to be more comfortable with being selfish. I know that's a necessity in life that we need to take care of and, and do. Think about it. Another way you can think of it, the, the term appreciate, right? Yeah. Appreciate and value. So whatever you appreciate, appreciates. So if you appreciate yourself, you're going to appreciate and value, therefore being more valuable to others, right? It is, it starts here. And here, then you can, you know, Bill Gates or all these people that have billions and billions of dollars that can give money away they didn't start with that you know they started by coding for 12 hours a day and becoming really proficient in that and you know becoming the best at that which people a lot of people bought built fortunes now they have the capacity to help way more than if i was like no i'm gonna start out by trying to help people it's like dude you're not really helpful because you're not really worth anything yeah you know that's very true Got anything else to add to being selfish? I think I've talked about myself too much. That's okay. But it is okay. It, it's it's, it's not, okay it's to not be that selfish. it's okay. It's necessary. It is necessary. It is a necessary requirement. It is necessary to be selfish. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give us a thumbs up anyway. Who cares? It's not going to hurt you. It's just a press of a button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Love this kid. He's amazing. I love you. We'll see you on the next video. And I love this kid. He's selfish.